Okay. Sure. Hello, everybody. This is Massachusetts Peer Reviews and Company. Today, we are looking at, with the assistance of Michael Komarov from Brooklyn, New York, and within a Beer Reviews, Jay Terrio from Louisiana. We are looking at the beers from the Kona Brewing Company, which started in the state of Hawaii in 1994. Uh, they started they, they were started on Kalua Kona on the island of Hawaii in the spring of 1994 by a father and son team. So that's cool. And they are now, I don't recall when, but they are now a part of the Craft Brew Alliance, which has Red Hook beers, Whitman Brothers Brewing beers, Kona Omission, and Square Mile Cider Company beers or ciders, as well as Appalachian Mountain Brewery. Uh, Nantucket, Massachusetts's own Cisco Brewery and Winwood Brewing Company. And also Red Hook. You said Red Hook? Yes. Okay. Red okay. Hook is yeah. an examination coming up in two weeks, by the way. Anyways, <laughs> um, the, beer, the beer that I'm bringing for the examination is their Big Wave Golden Ale. Mm, yep, yeah, I could have bought that one today. What did you bring? Well, I brought um, Longboard Island Lager, the original. Excellent. Does Mike? Did Michael Komarov find some Kona beers in his area? Did not. Oh, no. Ooh. Oh, ooh. But I'll tell you, it was available on the other side of the city. I just wasn't willing to go up to the Bronx to get it. What did you bring this evening to Czech? I, I, I think I've showed this before. This is from the Czech Republic. It's called Brow Czech. Have you seen this, Jay? No, Brow Czech. No. So this is a dark lager. A dark Czech lager. Sounds like something I would like. Now this beer, this beer I'm drinking is 4.6% alcohol. It's 20 IBUs. It's 144 calories. They use premium two-row pale malt, and the hops are Mount Hood, Haller Tall, Sterling, and Millennium. So it's definitely a craft. Excellent. Lager. We do have. We do have uh, Michael or Michael Komarov. We do have John Anelli that just joined us. Hello, John. Hi, John. Hello. Hello. If John can hear us, let us. Let us know which beer you brought from the Kona Brewing Company this evening. I've got the Longboard Island Lager. Ah, same one I have. Same as. Same as. Hey, Eric and John and Neela and, and, and Michael. You know what's interesting? These, uh, can you hear me? There we go. Kona Longboard and is the way you're breaking up, Eric. And the Kona website says, "Go ahead." The spear is considered, they said, a Dortmunder style lager, and it won the silver medal in 2016. Oh, let me retract. 2017, 20, 2016 at the Great American Beer Festival, and it won. And in 2015, it won the gold medal in 2016 as a, oh, I'm not going to mention that contest because I'm only going to do the big contest. Uh, Great American Beer Festival, silver medal, three times, and and that's pretty good. And the, the Kona Big Wave Golden Ale has a IBU rating of 21. It's 4.4 percent alcohol by volume it utilizes two row premium and caramel 20 malts and they're actually using galaxy and citra hops in this one and it is 132 calories uh, per one 12 ounce bottle so there you go now before i go any further because i always forget to ask this before we start drinking the beers is what's everybody's um thoughts and opinions going into the Kona? beer examination. What are your um, experiences with Kona Brewing Company beers up until this point? Let's start with Jay. Well, my experience is limited because we really don't get much here. We've got the, 
we've been getting the uh, longboard and lager going on 20 years. And, and then the, uh, you know, that ale you have, Castaway. No, not Castaway. Uh, big Wave. Big Wave. And, but then that's really it. Now, I did see a few stores had that, um, the, the um, what's it called? The Pipeline Porter. Yes. I thought it was rather expensive, so I didn't buy it. But I'm looking at their website here, and it's like it's a it's a nightmare in a way, you know, in a context that we can't get. I mean, look what they've got. Uh, Hanalia Island IPA, Wailua Wheat, Fire Rock Pale Ale, Kana Ha Blonde Ale, Castaway IPA, Lava Man Red Ale, Cocoa Brown, Gold Cliff IPA, Pipeline Porter, Imperial Vanilla Stout, Pipeline IPA, or Pineapple IPA, Lychee Lager, Magic Sands Mango Saison. I mean, hey, we'd buy it if we could get it, right? And the price was tolerable. Yep. What's That's your... my, experience. my experience is pleasant. I like it. Okay. What's your experiences and thoughts on the uh, Kona Brewing Company beers before we start drinking them, John Anelli? Uh, really have no opinion because I've never had a Kona beer before. This is my first Ooh. Kona beer. Okay. I can Excellent. only get two of, of the ones that Ron mentioned. I can only get two Kona beers. I can get the Longboard, uh, Longboard Island Lager and whatever the Golden Ale is. Those are the only two I can get. See what I mean? Gotcha. And uh, Michael Kormorov's uh, opinions are not much, are they? Because you don't well, get them readily right available. I, I, I believe in the past, and I was out in California, and I think I did have the Longboard also, the one that they're both trying to. I think I had that. I wasn't over impressed with it. But, again, we'll see what they think. Cool. All right. Let me show John what I have. John, I'm an observer, and I have that thing I showed the last time, that check, dark lager. That's what right. I'm drinking. Yeah, I'm interested to know what you think about that one. You said that's more of like a, a macro style for you, right? It, it's yes. not on yeah. yeah, but it is from the Czech Republic, so it's going to be probably different than your normal macro dark lagers, I would think. Okay. Yeah. So we got the big wave golden ale poured into a shipyard tulip style glass, and it has a very lemony yellow, almost golden color, pretty pretty golden colored, a uh, little bit of haze to it. It's not yeah. very sediment rich. I'm I suppose some people would call that unfiltered, but I do see a little bit of a haze to me. And a bigger head when I poured it. Now it just died down, just the fine white rim around the glass and it's very champagne like in its effervescence so that's what we're getting on the uh big wave golden ale and i didn't mention this but the only reasoning i actually ended up getting the uh kona big wave actually two things here the only reason i ended up getting the kona big wave beer is because it says bottled on march 8 2018 that was the date for the single bottles at my store and for the six pack i bought it in a six pack for 9.99 all the other Kona beers that they had between like a Fire Rock Pale Ale, like a Castaway IPA, and maybe that Porter that Jay was talking about in the Longboard, all of those had dates on it that were almost a year or two today on 2017. So I said, yeah, no, thank you. And that's because number two point I want to make is, is that I believe at most of the Red Hook breweries that are located around the United States on the continental U.S., your closest Red Hook brewery, at least mine, which is in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, are the ones that are brewing the Kona beers for your local area. So I would have figured that seeing these beers are brewed in the next state north of me, that these would be fresher beers, but I guess not. No. Well, it's just the stores are leaving them on the shelves. So that's the problem. Either that or they purchase too much and they don't know that people aren't buying them. That's but, another problem, but I find that with I don't care what brand it is. They've got KBS yeah. sitting on the shelf over there. They can't they can't get rid of it. Well, oh, six packs. Yeah. 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 I'm just, what is the uh yeah, that's like a highly Now mine is gold. Is that, you know, look. Yeah, what does that look like? Yeah. Gold, it's bubbly, it's clear, but I mean you can see some suspended sediment if you look close, but most people aren't going to do that. Uh same with John's. And not much head at all. I mean, and that died away and not much lacing. 
And uh, it does smell like this uh, special export, which is another beer you can't get, basically. A Dortmunder style beer, which also won many awards, but try finding it. You won't. You just won't. Dortmunder anything? is very rare, really. You have anything else to add to appearance and or potentially aromas, John Anelli, for the Kona Longboard Lager? Uh, everything that Ron said with the appearance, yeah, just kind of a golden color, no head, light to medium carbonation, and it just smells like a smells like a traditional lager beer, like a pretty much like a, a an American adjunct lager on the nose. There's really not much to it, but nothing off, just not too much there. I'm picking up a little <laughs> grain. I'm picking up a little grain and like roasted or toasted grain. And I think it does have a little more to it, in my opinion, like say like a Michelob original lager over a regular American. I mean, it's subtle. It's not like, oh, this is so much better. I think right before, right before John said it smells like I typed right into our YouTube chat. Don't say a macro, and he said American adjunct lager. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, you, I've had that beer many times. You all let me know if it tastes as such. But uh, continue with that statement, Jay. I think if I was going to say a macro lager, it would be something like Michelob Original, which is mass produced. Well. I don't even know if that's mass produced anymore. You can barely find it. I know one store that has it for six ninety nine. Oh, the original lager. Yeah, from nineteen uh, eighteen ninety six. But they've tinkered with the recipe over the years. That's probably the bottle on date too, right? Oh, I uh, hope not. But they, the original, <laughs> the Michelob original, uh, it used to be an adjunct and a lager, but then they decided to go all malt and make it into like a craft beer lager in nineteen in two thousand eight. Which I thought it really, it really got better, but um, and it didn't really catch on, you know, uh, and it just kind of lingers on the shelf. But I love Michelob Original. If I was going to drink a mass-produced lager, and I do all the time, <laughs> I, I would buy it. But I can't get it around here, so I just mm -hmm. I get other things, you know, with their own little characteristics. So anyway, the Kona Kona Big Wave. Golden Ale, 4.4%. It has a big, not, it's not, um, it's not like New England style IPA, juicy, that kind of, uh, that kind of a tropical citrus note, but there's definitely a whole bunch of tropical citrus notes in the beer. Yeah, like great. Definitely a lot of, um, pineapple. I mean, yeah, definitely grapefruit. Definitely apples. That's the citra and that's the hops for sure. But it's not going into that territory like a New England style IPA that use same hops. No. Where it doesn't taste it doesn't taste juicy. It doesn't have that kind of a dank, oily, resinous, hoppy component to it. It's only 21 IBUs. And it definitely only smells like 21 IBUs. It has some graininess to it. I don't know, it definitely has a lot of white bready kind of um multi notes to it. Correct. There could be a touch of a toasty, grainy, crackery kind of a component to it with some grassiness in the background, like some fresh cut grass kind of notes to it. But definitely the grassy, fresh cut grass note and those tropical fruit of pineapples and grapefruits are maybe even like lemons and mangoes maybe are the biggest notes in the beer. So, so far it smells like a refreshing beer for the summer time for sure. Have you had it before? I have. Yeah. Me too. I had a request a few years ago to review it on my channel, and um, I will give you my thoughts today and will not relive the past, to be completely fair and honest. Yeah. That's the best. So how is Yeah. I, I'm curious. Even though it's out of theme, we still enjoy Michael Komarov's uh, company. What? What are you getting out of your Czech dark lugger this evening? I'm getting, we see the color. Not much of a head. Coffee. It looks like it would smell like coffee, but it's more malty than it's coffee. You know, like um, bready malts that you get in a, in a in a lager? That's what you're getting from this dark lager, bready malts. And that's, ba that's basically it. And the head, it was a little bit bigger when it started. Now it's that kind of thin... You know, just the top of the head. Yeah, that's all that's left. 
Well, uh, what town in Czech Republic does it say? Let's see. Let's look at the Bible and see what they say. Nova Paka, N-O-V-A, one word, P-A-K-A. -A. So a small town in the Czech Republic. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that. And it's imported. Right. It's imported by Eurolink Limited, Woodland Hills, California. So it's coming through the West Coast. Huh. Okay. Well, I'm gonna take a sip of some Kona beer, and uh, let's talk about the most important part of the review: the taste test. I am not swilling grog. Cheers. <laughs> That's what he likes to say. Let's see. Let's go to. Uh, yeah, I'll start with John Anelli, a, a newbie to Kona beers of any kind. Is um, well, here he is. It uh, it tastes pretty good. Really, not too much to it. It's malty up front, um, a little breadiness in the middle. It's very lightly carbonated. It's not very prickly at all. Super light, car uh, lightly carbonated. If I'm being honest, uh, there's a little left to be desired on the carbonation, are my first thoughts with it. Uh, it does finish dry. It is pretty crisp. Um, I guess you could say it's refreshing at 4.6%. It's pretty sessionable, pretty refreshing. Definitely something that would go well on a hot summer's day, but... Um, my first thoughts are, I don't know. I'm a little disappointed, first impressions, because I paid $9.99 for a six-pack. Uh, the date is fresh. It was bottled on April 3rd, 2018, so I do Damn, have a fresh you got a pretty pack. fresh version. Wow. Um, so carbonation leaves a little to be desired. Um, just kind of a traditional... Macro style lager is is what I'm getting so far. Now, when you picked up the beer and you saw that it said lager, did you already have some kind of a preconceived notion or an idea of maybe what you were getting into? Oh what well, your honestly, when you bought it, I thought it was going to be a little bit, maybe like a more premium version of Land Shark or Corona or something like that, Ooh. but. It's definitely different than both of those beers. It, it's it's a lot different than Landshark. It's a lot different than Corona. I think the biggest difference that I'm picking up on right now is just the lack of carbonation with mine. Really? Um, and it's so fresh. That's strange. Well, I mean, it, it could just be what they were going for. It's it's a light, more of a lightly carbonated beer, but that's that's what I'm getting with mine. So, I want to hear Jay's opinion on all of this. Do you... Agree, disagree? What are your thoughts so far in the Kona Longboard Lager this evening? Well, I don't have the most, the freshest version of it, but it's all right. Um, How's the carbonation, first and foremost? It's kind of prickly. Oh, okay. And I'm picking up some... Interesting. Uh, what? I'm looking at because this Nova, I'm looking at this Nova Paca website, and I think... Uh, Michael Komaroff would love to try some of these other ones here, but uh, um, can get them in the United States. Yeah, if you can get them, it's bready. It's toasted like bread, like bread or toasted bread crust, and um, it's uh, let's see, um, it's uh, biscuity, and it it has that little twang that these Dortmunder style beers have, and it's hard to put your finger on it because you're saying. Well, I know it's not extra virgin olive oil, you know, but it's some kind of strange little character that you can always say, uh, that's a Dortmunder style beer, like the Dob, the Dortmunder Action Brauerei, and the and the special export, and this. Yeah. And you can't describe it, but you know it when you taste it. Now, I, this got, this store manager was telling me today, he said, when he went to Hawaii a few years ago, <coughs> He said every bar had it on draft, every hotel bar. It was like the big beer in Hawaii. I believe it. Okay. You know what used to be the big beer in Hawaii was the uh, – Maui Brewing Company beers? What's the one made with the sugar, the cane sugar? Um, oh. By Paps today. They used pure they – they put some Hawaiian cane sugar in it. Made by Paps, huh? 
it's owned by Pabst, but they imported from Hawaii. What's the name of this? It used to be. Well, the, I don't know. It used to be the number one beer in Hawaii, but uh. The only other beer company I know of in Hawaii is that Maui Brewing Company that makes that coconut porter. No, uh, this is like a. This used to be like it's. It's got a picture of a Hawaiian king on the label. I don't. I never could find it. Um, it is sold in the U.S. mostly California. It's called uh. Oh heck, I'll never. Primo that. Brewing. Primo, yeah, Primo. It's made with cane sugar. Okay. I mean, not. It's made with barley malt and stuff, but cane sugar is added. Uh, hey, it. The body here is a uh, uh, medium. It's a fairly crisp finish. It just has an unusual Dortmund style, went you know twang going. I like it. I mean, I. I I don't know if I'd want to pay a dollar ninety-seven after tax for a single, mm. but I did that to get a single and not get the whole six pack. Hey, Michael, yeah. you want to hear real fast what other variants they have at this company? Go ahead. I've only I, seen their regular lager. I know there's a regular lager they make too. I've seen yeah. that. What's the name of the one you're drinking again? This is um, Brow Check Dark. Brow Check Dark. Okay, it must be an American version name of it. They've got. Kavazniak, Kavaznik, it's uh it's an unfiltered, unpasteurized beer with 4.7% alcohol and comes in big plastic bottles for whatever bizarre reason. Hemp Valley, 4.5 and flavored with hemp extract. Sounds interesting. Sounds like Tyler's beer. All right. Woo. There's one called ginger. It's got 4.1% alcohol flavored with ginger. There's one called cherry. It is using cherries. Okay. There's Waldstein. And uh Valen oh oh Wallenstein. And it uh seven percent alcohol, a strong beer. Named after the uh the uh famous general Wallenstein. And it's got there's one called Pod Kronowski Special Dark, which might be what you're drinking. Is that five percent, or they don't give you the alcohol content? No. Then they've got the Pod Kronowski Special Light, which is six percent. How can it be special light at six point three percent? That sounds impossible. <laughs> they've got Granat. It's uh, a dark beer, and it's five point three. It's on real Hawaiian. These beers. It's Kumbarak. They've got Kumbarak. It's five point three. <laughs> They say a light lager. Yeah, 5.3. I don't know what these checks, these tri checks drink beer, you know, like it's uh, water. So maybe to them that's like, they've got Kristoff, 4.5. They've got Busek, which is 4% draft beer. They've got Motobrook, which uh, oh, it's an alcohol-free beer, Motobrook. Okay, sorry to co-opt your channel. Eric, That's I, all right. Since he brought in the Czech beer, I couldn't, I couldn't help myself. Sorry. Okay. I, 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 do, I do like the one I'm drinking, by the way. It's very roasty tasting. Mm. Okay. Any, any other notes while we're on the subject of your beer company's beer? I, I only know, like with Jay, all those ones Jay read, I've never seen any of them. I've seen Brow Check Light, which is a light lager, and Brow Check Dark. And the light yeah. is not a light beer per se, but light in color. That's, you know, one's dark, one's light. That's the only ones I've seen. But maybe the other ones are to be searched out. One fascinating yeah. thing about the brewery is that the one Michael's drinking was established during the days of the Austro-Hungarian Empire in 1872. And it's in a part of the Czech Republic that was seized by Germany in 1938. So uh, it was actually, and the Germans called it New Pock. New Pock. Interesting. New Pock. Yeah. And, and it was under German control until 73 years ago. Hmm. Yep. Fact about the uh the Kona Brewing Company beers that we're discussing this evening is that they're nowhere near the Czech Republic. Um no. anyway. <laughs> okay. Uh this beer, I I'm kind of feeling like the same thing that that you that that uh, Jay Terrio and John Anelli are are feeling about their beers with mine. It's I mean it's it's a decent beer. There's but there's really 
not a whole bunch to write home about and there's not enough standout flavors that I bought it before, don't get me wrong, but because there's no standout flavors that at $9.99, like why would I want to oh, oh. multiple times over the course of a year want to buy this? Um, but I digress on that. The primary notes and flavors that I'm getting out of the beer are those light tropical notes that I smelled in the beer, which were the grapefruit and some mango, and there's some lemoniness, and the pineapple is all there. There's a pale maltiness that comes from the two-row premium pale malt. There's a little bit of that toastiness to it. Now, Jay talked about there was a, in, in his Kona longboard, this, what what did he say? Like this, like this, uh, um, how did you describe that little funky taste you were getting out of that beer, Jay? Well, uh, well, I said I couldn't really describe it. I said it had a weird little twang to it. Twang. Uh, that's the word I'm looking for. And I think a lot of these Kona brewing beers, whether it's an ale, brewed as an ale or brewed as a lager, all kind of have that twang to it. They all have like, I don't know if it's the, if it's the grain components or they're using similar ingredients and recipes throughout the Kona line of beers, they all seem to have that underlining flavor to them. I'll be completely honest. Maybe it's their, maybe they use an odd yeast strain. Because there is definitely something that's hard to describe, but there's like a, it's it's not, I don't know how to describe it, but there's a, like that twang to it. There's that really sharp flavor that's just kind of, not off-putting, but it's just kind of weird. And actually, now that I think about this one, there's a little bit of like a honey-like sweetness, and potentially it might actually have some of that, um, like somewhere between that diacetyl and that green apple-ish kind of a flavor. It doesn't taste like there's an off-brewing flavor in the beer, but it doesn't necessarily taste like they really meant to put that, have that flavor in their beer. Well, it's like the, 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 um, the Foster's beers, overall, they're just like regular old beers. Okay, fine. Yeah. But when you start thinking on it while you're drinking on it. You're less and less impressed, right? No, I'm more and oh. more impressed. Wow. Oh. oh, you read me wrong. You judged me oh. before you knew me. Um, oh. what, what I mean is, see what happens when you, when you, when you, you're like that, that new cell phone I have, it, it tries to type what I'm going to write before I write it. <laughs> Auto-correct? Yeah, like I was trying to tell somebody I'm at your door and it was writing, I'm at the coop. I was like, what? Well, <laughs> yes. sense. It doesn't make any sense. So anyway, um, but what I'm saying is with Foster's Lager and Premium Ale, you drink it and the initial feeling is, ah, heck, this is just a regular old beer. Kind of like the Kona Longboard. But when you start thinking on it, while you're drinking on it, you start saying, no, 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 there's something a little more differentiated about it. And I think just like with the Fosters, they use that unusual yeast strain. Mm -hmm. I think it's the yeast strain. Now, would I go run out and pay $9.99 for a six pack of this? No, I haven't gone mad yet. But I, I mean, you know, I would pay $6.99, but I'm not gonna find it for that. I would just go get Michelob. I would just go get Michelob Original for six ninety nine, which is just as good as this, although it's different. You know, it's got its little different uh, attributes. But that, I'm going to sum it up. I would recommend Kona Longboard. I didn't love the the uh, Big Wave Ale so much. It reminds me of something though. That Big Wave reminds me of another ale. Like uh, uh, I keep thinking something from Sweetwater. There's some little oddities about some Sweetwater beers that I don't love. It's like that canned pineapple weirdness that I just can't yeah. fall in love with. I kind of know what you mean by that. Yeah, it's like, why would I just not go buy some dull canned pineapple? And I wouldn't even do that. Because it's not 4.4% <laughs> alcohol by volume. Uh, but um, yeah, I don't I'm, like it. I'm, I'm, I'm curious if John Anelle, what his if he agrees with the Kona Long, if Jay's assessment of the Kona Long board, or he finds anything different to interject about it. Um, well, I, I got to be honest, I'm not really too happy with this beer. I mean, it's not bad, but it's definitely a little underwhelming. 
It looks like day old beer. It looks like something you left out overnight. There's no carbonation. There's just no life to it. I wonder, uh, why, got a, I wonder why Jay got so much more carbonation from an older beer. Well, I even cracked open another one and poured it on top to see if maybe it was just a, like the bottle had been tampered with, and that's not the case. Um, born on date. What's your born on date? April April third, two thousand eighteen. So it's a fresh day. Golly, maybe you have to let them age. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, I'll say this: it's it does have some nice bready qualities in the middle, and it finishes pretty light. It is refreshing, <clears throat> but for nine ninety nine a six pack, I really can't recommend this. I'd rather have PBR. Or, um, you know, old Milwaukee, something like that, that has a little more zip to it, a little more life. This is a little disappointing. I would, um, I, I can't really recommend this at the price point. It is marginally good. I would give it an 80 out of 100, but that's really the best I could do with it. There you go, Michael Komaroff, 80 out of 100 for the Kona Longboard. Oh, God, now, eight, now, in your rating scale, John, 80 would be a B minus. That's a B minus. That's the lowest you can get uh, in the good range. So B minus. Okay. A C plus is in the good range. No, C plus is already faded. That's average. That's it's above average. average. It's high average, but still average, still whole hum. You won't. You you don't want to know my born on date. Uh, is it 2016? 2017 at least. October 2017. That's that's, that's fairly, why I that's, didn't. That's fairly that's why old. I didn't, that's why I didn't buy that beer because they all had those May I, dates from 2017. Jay, that's past the six month, you know, fantasy. I limit. know. I know. Oh, crap. Didn't taste bad though. It didn't taste old. So where, where do it, they brew? Where do they brew Red Hook beers near you? Because that's what I. That's where I think that they brew these kind of beers. Red Hook. Uh, I bet you, I think I threw the bottle out. I bet you they're coming from Houston, Texas, which is Anheuser-Busch InBev, who has a 32% equity stake in uh, the Craft Brewers Alliance. Mm hmm You get my drift? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, Houston, Texas is about... Uh, 325 miles west of me. Mm -hmm. Texas itself, I can drive to Texas 206 miles west of me, 206, which is not exactly close. No. But uh, that's how far Texas is from me. Mississippi is about 75 miles from me. How about Alabama? Uh, hmm, 120 miles and georgia's further oh well yeah <laughs> of course florida too that's even further because you got to go to mississippi then alabama then florida well if you went to the place that alabama crosses florida that's at mobile pensacola they're close to each other right the little piece that hangs down yeah about two and a half hours two mm -hmm. hours right, which is, i mean you're much closer to any of these places than eric and i are so yeah, I can get to Pensacola in three hours, and I can get to I'm, Memphis in five and a half. I'm definitely not that far away from uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, where the Red Hook Brewery is, where they also brew this Kona beer. So I guess I'm just kind of shocked and surprised that for technically how close I am, I don't remember the mileage. It's less than got to be less than 100 miles for damn sure. I, I don't feel like I'm that far away from the Kona and the Red Hook Brewery in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, although it seems like we get out-of-date beers like like it's going out of style for some reasoning. And maybe, maybe Kona beers just aren't popular beers, or maybe the stores, they buy up too much and bring up and bring too much Kona beer into the store and nobody yeah, buy, and one's going to buy them. Yeah, I doubt they're real popular. There's so much of a flood of craft beers. It's like, what is popular? You know, everybody's always jumping from this to that, to this to that. You know what I mean? So I did not give my my overall assessment of the uh, uh, golden or big wave golden ale. And I think in the past, I've probably given it um, middle to high 80s out of 100. And I'm just not... Uh, gonna give it that. I don't think that any of us really are that wowed and floored over these Kona beers for 
for a 9.99 six pack, you're not getting a whole great deal out of the beer. To be completely honest, I'm not mad about the beer. I'm not angry that I spent 9.99 on the beer. It's a very easy drinking, good, you know, it's very easy drinking, um, easy going beer. So in that regard, this is definitely what you want in the summertime. Like Jay was saying, it's got this weird twinge about it. it has this weird yeasty character to it. Um, it, like I said, it's somewhere between that that buttered popcorn and that green apple kind of a note, which I think is that twingy flavor that we're all getting out of the beer, I would have to imagine. So therefore, I don't know if they're, I mean, they talk about using two-row pale premium malts. I don't know exactly how much time and effort really outside of Hawaii they might be putting into these Kona beers. And then because they're not really imported, they're, I don't know where they're getting their ingredients from, but maybe actually getting a real live Kona beer from the actual state of Hawaii might yield better results than this particular beer right now. At the particular moment in time, I can't, I guess I would have to give it a 78 out of 100. It's slightly above average for a beer, but it's still not as good as what maybe John and LA would normally drink out of a macro lager. What Jay does does have on hand a lot of times in his refrigerator so in those kind of aspects this isn't as good of a beer so a 78 out of 100 i think is completely fair and honest without actually going to play and, and, beer and, and that's a c plus yeah that's a better than average beer but not much better in my book okay J jay has at least temporarily left hopefully he'll be returning that's what i'm guessing let me give you a little John, you would love this beer that I'm drinking. I think Eric would like it too. It's got to be. I'm sure it's better than than the uh, longboard here. No, it's really good. The all, I guess my only negative about this is because it's a dark Czech beer. I don't know what they're trying to do. It's not like it's it's like a flavor wonder kind of beer, but but it does have nice flavor. It's just um, you wouldn't say the flavor is wonderful if you know what I mean. So we all have crappy beers this evening. Right? No, it's it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It it it's it, it's it doesn't have any any off twang in it, so that's positive. But it tastes like um, it's roasty, it's smooth, it goes down pretty easy. It's a five percent, so it's sessionable. Um, the carbonation is good. Um, I guess I would have been looking maybe for a little bit more of. Um, another taste in it maybe but what i don't even know what what they're looking for but you don't even um, know what you're looking for out of that beer just more of this more of something but i would still say it's better than most of what you've been saying i would give it like an 85. oh wow okay okay so you'd be open to trying their other yes if i if i see it the only reason i didn't buy the light one is it looked like a typical macro lager the way it was packaged and I was afraid it was going to be kind of questionable. We're all think, using the word macro like it's going out of okay, style. Forget this macro. Year. It looked like it was going to be like a Euro lager, like a Euro lager. And there People are some, already said macro, but okay. keep going. Hey, but as you can see from me reading their website, what they call light, we would call not so light. <laughs> and I guess that's from living in the Czech Republic where beer, they're another country per capita that drinks a lot of beer. Yeah, like, mm. there we go more than any other country i think Bel belgium was up there too but it was czech one belgium too is that what it was i think so so 80 85 to me is a b. is a b yeah that's a good fair score i think yeah i'm not but i'm not angry but, at but i would recommend this and i paid a dollar 79 for a 16.9 ounce bottle so that, it's well, wow it, it's well priced that's there you go one. yeah that's a Kona deep. beers for how they taste and they have like like i keep mentioning that jay was mentioning because it, it he he said it and it's really resonating with me that really twangy yeasty it tastes like it might be an off brewing technique i don't know but for 9.99 i shouldn't say they should be ashamed of themselves because there are much better beers from kona although they're pretty much my overall assessment here before we close out the evening is going to be about kona beers is that i've had them before some are better than others. I think that the longboard is definitely better to me than the big wave golden ale. Fire yeah. Rock Pale Ale is all right, but when you hear these names like golden ale, longboard lager, 
um, Fire Rock Pale Ale, or they even do a porter too. Yeah. They're really like sessionable, easygoing beers that don't have a whole bunch to offer you except for pretty high drinkability. So if what you're primarily looking for is high drinkability beers, yeah, Kona beers could be a good step in a good direction to go. If you're looking to save a few bucks and still drink some highly refreshing beers, there are certainly many more places to go for a dollar or two less. You can get a lot of different six packs from places like Brooklyn Brewery yeah. and the uh, Sam Adams Brewing Company and don't forget, Red Hook too. It are going to be better beers. But don't forget the climate of Hawaii now, tropical climate. Now. True. Hey, and one of the other things that I was saying was is that I have no clue if if you actually go to the state of Hawaii and try Kona beers, if maybe they taste like they're a brood of a higher quality. Than, than the places that contract brew it from it. Red Hook Breweries around the United States. I doubt it. Hey, um, I was going to talk about. They're probably all the same, you know. Uh, I uh, <laughs> I was talk. I was going to say I can drive ten hours from here. If I go ten hours from here, I can drive to St. Louis, Missouri, in ten hours. I can drive to Orlando. Uh huh. I can drive to Orlando, Florida, in ten hours. Yes. And I can drive to Mexico in ten hours. And they have Kona beers there. Well, maybe, uh, maybe I, Carta Blanca, maybe Carta Blanca in Tecate. I don't think Jay is driving ten hours for any Kona beer. <laughs> I'm not driving ten hours for a beer, period. But I would go to Mexico, no. go walk around and look at what Mexico. are you. So you be you be you, you being very experienced in trying all these different beers and having some of these Kona brewing beers over your career as a beer reviewer what are what are your thoughts concluding the year review today and what are your ratings on some kona longboard yeah jay hasn't given his rating yet oh yeah I don't hear uh, it all well uh probably give it a 88 out of 100. In my really? experience is so limited it's hard to say i mean i the, the uh, big wave i wasn't thrilled with that one that'd probably be a lower score by like an 85 but eight or 84. 88 out of 100 on a cone along board. And I think if it was fresh, it could go higher to 89. I wouldn't think into 90s. But um, I mean, I don't know. It's hard to say it. I mean, it's hard to rate stuff you can't access. It's irritating. Right. It's like all these Polish beers. Oh, I love them, but I can't buy them. So, I mean, what the heck? Just to let you know, when I got home from work today, I drank a Keystone Ice. Uh oh. That's dangerous territory. Well, I'm doing natty ice right uh, 5. now. 5.9, so that's like know. kitty. 5.9, that's like kitty beer for me. Well, what's your overall assessment of the Kona beers that you've had as a whole? Mm, I would say favorable with restraint. <laughs> Like I said earlier, I have tried a couple of them, and I just was not awed by them. They're okay. Nothing to write home about. Is They're that going to be? Is that going to be your assessment? Just trying the uh, Kona Longboard for the first I think, time. I think. I ever? think. I. I think I've had one other one too. Maybe I've. Maybe I've had the Big Wave also. Actually, is that going to be? No, I, yes. look, I would. I would try another one, but I'm yeah. like 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 Jay and John. I'm not spending six. I'm not spending nine ninety nine on a six pack when I can no. get comparable beer for eight dollars a six pack, eight fifty nine dollars, maybe even pack. less. Yeah, but I'm curious as to seeing that this is the first beer, and the first beer, or the first time that John and Nelly has had Kona Longboard Lager, and that it's the first time he's ever had a Kona beer. And I don't know if his expectations were met or if they were shattered or what your final thoughts are on the Kona beer that you had this evening in the brewery going forward. Uh, well, this one definitely didn't wow me. Uh, I thought it would be a little bit better. It's, it's just a, a low uh, B beer for me, being the first Kona beer that I've had. It's a little disappointing. I definitely wouldn't spend $9.99 again for a beer like this. Um, this would be one moving forward if I were to try any Kona 
beers it would be in a pick your own six pack or something like that just to yep. try but it's definitely not worth the price i can't say that i mean you know it, i did get a fresh date with mine so uh it's it's definitely i'm drinking it as it was intended i guess it's not a, a, a you know outdated beer um i mean it's just uh i mean look at that thing it just looks kind of it, it really, looks flat really yeah i i i, I, I i'm still Finding it strange, and it's not your fault, John. I'm still finding it strange that Jay's beer, being from October 2017, sounded like he had more carbonation in that beer than yours. I'm wondering if something Wait happened. Wait a minute. Mine yeah. wasn't exactly, uh, overflowing with foam now. Okay, well, you it's sounded not. like it was more prickly than John's. Yeah, well, I mean, and there is there is a little bit of carbonation with it, but I can't see it in that glass from here. Oh. It, le it well when you first pour it you get a little bit it just that you know there, there's really not too much going for it it's not it's not as lively as i would like it to be yeah for my money i'd much rather <laughs> save three or four bucks and get pbr um or you know honestly yeah. i'd probably rather drink bud light than this right about now there's just just not not lively enough for me and um it does nothing you know, First of all, it, it just, it's just barely above average. That's why it gets an 80 because it just is a little bit better than average plus, and, and that's the best I can do with it. Sure. When, yes, I, buy, it when I buy these multi pack, multi count, multi count craft beers, you know what I buy? I buy the dang variety packs the Samuel Adams, yes. the Spoon, the Shock Top, the, 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 the Full Sail, the, the Sweetwater. Etc. Shipyard variety packs because it's a better deal. You can usually get those for fourteen ninety nine at Walmart or or at the worst sixteen ninety nine. So why would I ever dream of paying nine ninety nine for six? Just six. I yeah. could pay fourteen ninety nine for twelve. I mean, you think I went crazy? No, I don't think so. <laughs> that is a really good point. I mean, they do make actually. Kona does have a variety pack, and that's definitely a thing to do. I've had them before. And I remember thinking more favorably towards them, but hopefully my palate isn't changing enough where I can't appreciate lighter styles of beers and ales. And before we hopefully. get on, no, yeah, I can't stay up late. I mean, I could, but I'm not. Hey, I'm gonna say this: I love Red Hook beers. I love Red Hook beers, and I think they're better. Well, I can't really judge Kona because I haven't tried anything, but I love Red Hook stuff too. I love Red Hook beers. I love. Uh, Widmer Brothers, which another one I can't get. Uh, Full Sail is great. Uh, uh, I can't think of all these Brewers Alliance things, but uh, I I think Red Hook is fantastic. They one of the they're one of the pioneers in the craft beer movement. People like to slag on Red Hook now, but I think that's a joke. They're yeah, we're gonna try to re. I, I didn't find their beers at us at at the one store that I went to this past week. But I know we can get Red Hook beers from my area, and I have written it down to review the Red Hook beers in two weeks. Oh, so I, the I, I first week of June. Yeah, I can go to Rouse's and get Red Hook beers like that ESB, which that's yeah. a great that's a great beer, and the Long Hammer IPA. And they make one with the Dan Patrick of the Dan Patrick Show called the Audible Ale. To yeah, at first I didn't like it, but then I realized it was me, not the beer. Yeah, so we're going to try to do that. I'm going to keep that on the schedule. And next week, it could be a very polarizing topic, depending on who's watching and what preconceived notions are. Next week, next Wednesday, the 30th, is going to be Green Bottle Beers. I've got mine. So stay tuned for all of that coming up. And Eric, I have... Before Perhaps we go off. topics for the following weeks after that, we can let you know about that as we finalize. But Michael Komarov has some okay. final words for you. I'm going to read the back of the bottle of my brow check. I didn't realize they had a little statement on the back. Brow check is a true traditional lager, hand handmade the same way since 1872, using the original three-step brewing method. Reddish dark color, natural head, rich hoppy and malty aroma with a slight sweetness leaves a very pleasant aftertaste cheers from the czech republic uh, now now i gotta ask you what is a natural head 
I have no idea, and I don't even know what the three-step method is either. What do you think that is? Sip, drink, and pour. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. But for the price, this is a marvelous beer. All right. Well, it sounds like a good beer for I mean, the I mean, amount 80, that you got. 80, Eighty-five. If you give it, if you if you give a beer a solid B, and you're getting it for less than two dollars for a pint, that's a good price. Yes. So yeah. Three step method is probably brewing, aging, uh, brewing, filtering, and bottling. Huh? I mean, brewing, filtering, and aging. Yeah. Okay. Probably you're probably right about that. Uh, but uh, does John? Well, uh, so I yep. guess that was Michael Corbin final words on his beer that beer sounds pretty good so yeah. i guess we got all of our p's and q's oh tyler mansell is watching live hi tyler he asked, a couple, he asked a couple of questions or he mentioned a couple of things the first one was he wanted to know uh what is the best kona beer for those that have had a few in my assessment i i, I responded to that and i said they uh, maybe the porter dot dot dot. They are just slightly above average, man, and that's that's true. And then he wanted us to the beers is is it beers of the South Friday says Bart Robinson. No, we did beers of the South last week on this channel, Bart. Uh, and then Tyler, remember to tell the group that this Friday on the Tyler Mansell channel, seven thirty Eastern Daylight Time, is dry hopped beers. So be staying tuned for that. I've got mine. Cool. So, unless anybody else has any final thoughts or comments, I guess this has been an examination of the Kona Brewing beers. Thank you all for participating on screen and on the chat. Keep tasting those great beers. Cheers. We'll see you soon. I'm drinking my last beer of the evening, which is a natural ice. Surprisingly, not so bad. No, wow. I, I like um, that beer. And we'll see you on Friday and then again here on the Masters Beer Reviews channel on Wednesday, next Wednesday, 7.30 Eastern Daylight Time for Green Bottle Beers. Be safe, everybody. Cheers. Bye.